एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस सेशन मेरा नाम रिशम वसीम है मेरा बड़ा लवली होस्ट ने हमारी तारीफ करवा चुकी हैं आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस इस्टीम्ड पैनल एंड आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक बीकन हाउस फॉर अलाउिंग मी टू हैव दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन विद दैम सबसे पहले तो ऑन माय लेफ्ट साइड आई हैव कामान लशारी साहब ही इज़ द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ वर्ल्ड सिटी लाहौर अथॉरिटी लशारी साहब हैज़ सर्व एज द चीफ कमिश्नर इस्लामाबाद एंड ऑल्सो चेयरमैन कैपिटल डिवेलपमेंट अथॉरिटी सी डी ए Um, his distinction in service has been in the field of art, culture, and heritage. And पिछले नौ साल से he has been working as the director general of Walt City Lahore Authority, and he has completed a number of projects in the old city of Lahore. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Then we have Mr. Hassan Bhutta, who is currently the secretary of Sports Punjab. उससे पहले he was the secretary of tourism and archaeology, and he has also been the home secretary of Gilgit Baltistan. इन्होंने पाकिस्तान के म्यूजियम्स में बहुत काम किया है ही रिसेंटली ओपन अप राम प्यारी म्यूजियम इन गुजरात इन 2021 एंड हरप्पा म्यूजियम की इन्होंने गैलरी एक्सटेंड की है बाय फोकसिंग मोर ऑन द लोकल हीरोज ऑफ दैट एरिया व्हिच इज़ ऑलवेज अ वेरी मच अप्रिशिएटेड स्टेप देन ऑन माय लेफ्ट आई हैव मिस बीना जवाद हु इज़ अ प्रोमिनेंट पाकिस्तानी कथक परफॉर्मर परफॉर्मर एंड द को फाउंडर ऑफ द स्कूल हरसुक शी ऑल्सो टीच इज कथक एल एट एल जी एस शी ट्रेन फॉर कथक अंडर द ट्यूटिलेज ऑफ महाराजा गुलाम हुसैन कथक फ्राम नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर टू नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन शी एंड हर हजबेंड हैव ऑल्सो फाउंडेड हरसुक टुगेदर टुगेदर टू सर्व एज अ कम्यूनिटी ऑफ आर्टिस्ट थिंकर्स एंड ऑर्गेनिक फार्मर्स विच इज़ प्रमोटिंग एन ऑल्टरनेटिव व्यू ऑफ लाइफ दैट इज़ डीपली रूटेड इन द पाकिस्तानी कल्चर and last but certainly not least we have mr fs ijazuddin he is an international recognized art historian and author of more than a dozen books which includes a catalog of miniature paintings from the punjab hills two books on the history of lahore one on dr henry kissinger's secret visit to china in july 1971 and he is also a future writer for dawn so thank you everyone for joining me for today's session i am very excited to talk to you so jaise ki aap thank you taliyan <laughs> सो जैसे कि यू गाइज कैन सी हमारा जो सेशन है वी आर गोन बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द इनहेरिटेंस ऑफ हेरिटेज एंड कल्चर इन टाइम्स ऑफ चेंज दिस सेशन विल असेंशली बी अस डी कंस्ट्रक्टिंग कि हेरिटेज एंड कल्चर क्या है क्या होना चाहिए इन टाइम्स ऑफ चेंज इसको इवॉल्व करने की ज़रूरत है या जैसा है वैसा रहना चाहिए और डिसाइड कौन करेगा इसका फ्यूचर हु विल बी द पीपल ऑन द टेबल हु विल गेट टू डिसाइड कि हमारा कल्चर और हमारा हेरिटेज क्या है सो just to kind of contextualize i would like to ask a question jo aap sab logon ke liye mera question hai so if everyone can just take like 2 minutes and kind of answer this question um if you can just look at what art uh, what heritage and culture is outside the textbook definition art and culture kitna hum आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं कितना हम बिल्ड करते हैं हमारा कल्चर और कितना हमारा कल्चर हमें बिल्ड करता है डू यू थिंक समवेयर वी हैव डन लाइक अ डिसर्विस टू आर हेरिटेज एंड कल्चर आई पुटिंग इट इन अ बॉक्स एंड फोकसिंग मोर ऑन प्रिजर्विंग इट रदर दैन फिगरिंग आउट कि इसने इवॉल्व होकर क्या होना है हमारे कल्चर का फ्यूचर क्या है इसको होना क्या चाहिए रदर दैन ये पहले क्या था सो जस्ट टू काइंड ऑफ कंटेक्चुअलाइज इट कि आपके हवाल आपके ख्याल में हेरिटेज और कल्चर क्या है और इज़ इट a flexible thing or is it a specific thing that we need to kind of identify sir maybe we can start with you thank you very much i think uh, there is a great need of clarity and commitment to the question that you have raised that is uh, what is our culture and how do we identify ourselves with it and how do we promote it or or propagate it Uh, all the more, this is true for every society but all the more for people like us pakistan which is just 75 years old and we all keep hearing there is a crisis of identity so why is this crisis of identity uh, for a nation which is yes as a nation is 75 years old but as a region it is the oldest civilization of the world so i think there is a dichotomy there's a distortion which we need to understand and to me it appear that we have linked up our culture with religion instead of region culture is always region bound and uh, religion is just one part of the culture but here the stamp of religion has come so heavy because of the ideology on the basis of which the country was uh, made that still continues to grow and to spread and expand and to stress all other 
uh, facets of our life and of, of culture. As a result, what has happened in this country in the last 40 years has overpowered what has happened for 4,000 years in this region. So what are we trying to identify ourselves with? We need to have a clarity, is it the 40 years recent or is, is it 40 th or 4,000 years? So um, I, I would be very happy to see that we come out of this syndrome of uh, looking at our culture or dampening it or re restricting it in the name of security uh, as a security state or in the name of religion or as a religious state. These are all very normal things with all countries, but we have got too much, let's say, uh, gone deep into it and our culture has been, has been uh, constricted, which is one of the most vibrant, diverse, rich, old culture anywhere in the world. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I just endorse the views of Kamal Shari Saab. He used to be my teacher in academy also. So I can't uh, diverge from it. But in my opinion, culture is always where you live uh, in a society. There are three things important. One is the society, the culture, and the civilization. They are interlinked. Society is there which uh, from one generation to the other generation, we live together and uh, uh, contribute or, uh, our feelings to other generations. Then there is a culture. Culture also transforms from one generation to the other. And that civilization is the whole thing. For example, the example of uh, the oldest civilization in the Punjab province, we are living here, the Indus Valley civilization, the Harappa, and then the uh, Gandhara civilization are there. So we used to be uh, at that point or in that province or in an area where the oldest, uh, two of the four oldest civilization were available here. So culture always evolves. And uh, culture has two meanings. One is a tangible and the other is a intangible. Tangible means which can be seen. It may be a movable or immovable. Movable means paintings, sculptures can be moved from one place to another. Immovable are the artifacts, the monuments, historical and natural monuments are there, the Lahore Fort, the Lahore Museum, or the Texla Museum, the Rotas Fort, etc. These are the immovable. Um, and then the second one is the intangible. Intangible is the most important, is the cultural, the language, the values. The, are the uh, heroes, our heroes are there, the rituals are there, uh, how we practice it. So these are the two kinds of the culture. I think it always evolves with time. And uh, 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 as far as the protection of culture is concerned, uh, it has a history. For example, in 1913, the French had the first law how to protect the culture in a country. And it evolves with the help of UNESCO. In 1954, the UNESCO Heritage, there is a convention for the protection of uh, culture. Then in 1970, and again 1972, these are three conventions of UNESCO. And this uh, 1972 is regarding the heritage and culture protection in the whole world. Now coming to the cultural heritage. Cultural heritage, another uh, uh, con uh, con uh, UNESCO convention, of 2003, which deals with the how to protect the cultural heritage in the whole world. And uh, taking example from this 2003 convention, the European Union took another convention known as Faro Convention in 2005, according to which this, the language, the uh, our values, are the all the characteristics of culture should be protected by all and sundry. So this is the uh, 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 legal point of view, I am just telling it. And as far as Pakistan is concerned, 28, Article 28 of 1973 Constitution speaks about the protection of your language, your script, and your culture. And also there's a principle of, uh, uh, this basic human right is uh, in engraved in this uh, 28 article. And another important thing is the sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goal 11, says that it is to protect the communities and the culture of the urban, uh, urbanization. And so I think there's a culture always evolves it. With the, with, there's a legal entity, uh, we, we, it may be from the world opinion that UNESCO is the leading organization. As far as in Pakistan, it is also evolving. Culture is always evolving. Wise words to remember. Yes, ma'am, Veena, please, the same question to you. Very nice. Uh, 
I feel that when, when we look at uh, masses of people all over the world, uh, we are looking too far. The person we need to look at is ourselves, myself. What is my culture? What is my thought? What are my habits? Culture kya hai? What is culture? Culture is an amalgamation of habits. How do we celebrate a wedding? How do we do harvest and we sing and dance while we are harvesting? That's part. Culture is a humongous subject. It comes from birthing a baby to dying and putting yourself in the grave. This is culture, na? But why do we look outside? For real culture which evolves, it is the person inside. We evolve, therefore our culture evolves as communities. What do societies give us? Please ask the question. Societies are there, you make the societies. But here we see the societies making you. Is that true? Because you are uh, suddenly under pressure of the society. Oh, society will not like this. Oh, the so my society will... I can't send my si child to this school. Uh, 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 what will people say? That means you, your power has been taken out of your hands and given into society. That is is the thing which needs to change. When you become powerful in your own self and you know you are right, you're not a hypocrite, you're not lying, you're truthful, and you are following your heart, you will create the culture. It is you, the person, the individual which creates cultures. Cultures have been given down to us historically. Uh, my grandfather, his, you know, I can't remember. We just remember we were born and we were born in this house and there were certain things we did in a certain way, but that was the way of the family, right? Who is involved with the culture of the country, for heaven's sake? I mean, do we even know what a culture is? I hardly see anyone knowing what a culture is. If we think, like you said, about tangible things, Kathak, for example, I'm a Kathakar. How many people know what Kathak is? I'm a classical vocalist. How many people know what Rag Eman is? Huh? So, culture will give you what you want out of it, what your heart says. You are the individual. You have to pick and choose what does my heart say? What will I follow? But as a country, when we come to the country, Pakistan has created, a, it's a hard image, it's not a soft image. That in Pakistan people carry guns and they shoot in the air and they kill people, you know, even on weddings. Hmm? So, uh, huh. in that way, culture can come in useful when we take it and use it to create a better image of Pakistan. Okay. So that's what we have to think. But that is the other side, that is the greater picture. The, the, the real picture is here. Yeah. Who are we? And we are the creators of culture, okay? Yeah. I think. Thank you, ma'am, that's a beautiful perspective. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> I know it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll do a great job. That is <clears throat> brilliant. And of course, as you say, it's a hard act to follow because um, uh, after such an eloquent exposition, um, I think it's, uh, it's difficult to match it in any way, but let me give it a different elliptical dimension. And I'm going to follow what um, Kamran Bhai had said. We've had the pleasure of working together in a number of capacities. He mentioned this question of um, a 75-year-old country trapped in the body of a, uh, you know, a state. And I, here I'd like to draw the distinction between a state and a nation. What has happened is that we have, are a state which is 75 years old, but we have a history that, as Kamran Bhai and uh, Bhutta Sabha said, 
goes back millennia. Where do we create the linkage of continuity? In our minds and in our history books and in our political philosophy, there was Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, etc. And then there was a dark age before Muhammad bin Qasim came. And after that, you had the Mughals, and then you had the uh, Sikhs, and then the British, etc. Now I'm going to ask a question. Since we are a mix of different cultures, different inheritances, let me put it, identities, how many of you here, and I'm going to ask this question of the audience without your mobiles, um, so can I ask you not to look at your mobiles, but to answer the question directly to me? Uh, the lady in the white uh, shirt, yeah. Which one of these cultures, inheritances or traditions, would you link yourself to? The Buddhist, the Hindu, the Muslim, the British, the Sikh, or modern? Which one do you relate to? I wasn't talking about influence. I'm talking about what do you regard as the DNA of your origin? OK, so you believe it's Muslim. So I presume your ancestors came with Mohammed bin Qasim. Am I right? What happened before? You mean all of you came from with Muhammad, your ancestors came from with Mohammed bin Qasim? No, of course no, not. OK, so which one? Who says no? Yes, who? Absolutely, and? Absolutely. Would you have the courage to admit that yes. your great grandfather might have been a Hindu? There could be possibility. Okay. So once we've jumped that hurdle and we've said yes, we do recognize that we are talking about a nation. And when I'm talking about a nation, I'm talking on a north-south grid. And I'm making that quite deliberate, that distinction or definition quite deliberately. Because when we came into existence, we were not north-south, we were east-west. And our entire thinking was based on how to see a commonality or achieve a commonality between east and west. And we failed. There's no doubt about it. And we failed not for our own reasons. We failed because history was against us. Geography was against us. Politics was against us. Never in the history of mankind have there been two wings of a nation created, of a state being created, which was a thousand miles apart. Never. And so history caught up with us, where, and geography did, where suddenly then in 1971 they broke away. So now we are shed of, we are, you know, we've been shed of that um, inheritance, if you like, of that linkage of an East Pakistan Bengali tradition. We don't need to learn Bengali, we don't need to speak Bengali, we don't need to listen to Bengali songs, we don't need to look at Manip Manipuri as a dance form, or none of this. It's now cut, we've been halved. But we've been reduced to a nation. And I'm going to emphasize that because we now have north to south, so we have KPK, we have Punjab, we have Sindh, and we have Balochistan. Now it is up to us to find the commonality between this and to assert that commonality. And that is where culture comes in. And I totally take your point, and I'm now going to repeat what the question that I asked you about your origin. Because here we are talking about a cultural inheritance, and when I talk about heritage, heritage by its definition is what we inherit and what we will leave for our children. Culture is how we mold it, is what we can do with it. It's in anticipation of what we leave to our children. So uh, somebody wants to find that culture is, it's what grows on the vine of tradition. It grows on, on tradition. So what, is, what are we going to leave for our children? We can't leave them Hindudara, we can't leave them Harappa, etc. What we can do is to enlarge their consciousness by expanding our own, as Bina Ji said, our, the, our own comprehension of culture and inclusion of culture by integrating in it an awareness that there were other art forms, there were other religions, there were other 
um, uh, uh, languages which we have to adopt as being our own. We don't speak Punjabi. We speak what is the residual language of a whole. Now, I'll give you a personal example of this. I used to be the principal of Aitchison College, so I was delighted when a young lady came in just now as I was leaving. She said, you're Aitchison. I said, yes, I was a teacher in Aitchison. But I said, I'm glad you have a longer memory than I do. While I was in Aitchison, and we had a total boys' school, I asked this question. I wanted to introduce comparative religion into Aitchison. I said, can we, and I asked 900 parents out of 1,200, 900, will you allow one class, one class, not a, sesh, not a course, one class on comparative religion? And I'll discuss Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, all of the other religions which are extant in this country. And when you think about it, Buddhism was expelled from India. You can't find Buddhists in India, except, you know, imported Buddhists who come on Yatras. You can't find them. And as Kamran Bhai has said, we are now trapped in this straitjacket of Islam. Okay? And when we just step out of it, we are then caught in a contunement. All right? Mentality. So I'm not going to say beyond that, but contunement mentality. So when I asked this question of parents at Aitchison, you won't believe this. 700 of them said no. I said, why not? Oh, they said, no, 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 no. We want, we want them to grow up as Muslims first. And then they can go and, you know. So I said, what you're really saying is, for example, they should be here. They should, you know, go to weddings and dance and do all that. But you don't mind who they flirt with when they go outside the, on you know, go to foreign universities. Wo jais hai, ye na jais hai. You should not, you won't allow them to do it. And when we pressed them on this, I said, do you accept Abraham as your prophet? And they said, yes. I said, do you accept Hazrat Musa as your prophet? Yes. Do you accept Hazrat Isa as your prophet? Yes. I said, then why are you denying them the DNA of their religion? Why should they not know that this is where they came from, it doesn't mean that they diminish their pride in being a Muslim. I hope it would strengthen their resolve in being able to understand that that's where we came from, and that is what we can tell our children we were. So let me summarize very briefly that inheritance, uh, heritage, is what we inherit and what we pass on. Culture is, as you said, Binaji, is what we make of it. And if we fail, then we leave just a yeah, no, and that's beautifully said. And just to kind of carry that conversation forward to this side of the panel, just like you said, you said, culture is homogeneous. It's not one thing. Cultural diversity is something that really needs to be focused on in this region because the earth, it's the birthplace of Sikhism, Hinduism, um, and uh, Buddhism. So how do we... How can we come up with a more nuanced understanding of culture, especially within young people? Uh, because both of you have worked extensively with the government and with the state. What could be some tangible steps that could be taken without, you know, ruffling any feathers, without uh, making anyone feel threatened about the religious identity? We are who we are, and that is acceptable. But how can there be tolerance to understand that, yes, I'm a Muslim, but this region where I am in is also the birthplace of a lot of other religions, and that is also a part of my identity, and that is okay. Because unless we have that nuanced understanding, we will be confused, right? So, sir, both, if you can take turns kind of continuing that conversation. Well, uh, if I get what you're wanting us to comment upon is how can the youth get connected with uh, our culture? Uh, well, I think uh, the schools and the homes play a huge role. That's where the formation of ideas, habits take shape, and the thoughts. So, uh, and schools more, because uh, schools is where there is a formal, well-considered um, uh, imparting of uh, education. And uh, if, if the schools come up with a syllabus, which is related to 
the kind of culture we, the educated, so-called educated lot, we think that this is the best for our country, for its uh, national cohesiveness, its variety and its identity, whatever, then that should form part of the syllabus. We see very little being taught to the children. I, I do not know the uh, syllabus of a particular institution, but generally my impression is that uh, we don't see Bullesha being talked about. We don't see uh, Abdul Latif Shah Bhattai being talked about. Um, and as uh, Mrs. Jawad just said uh, about our traditional dances, classics, things like that. So we, we, while we teach about West, and uh, that's all very fine. Um, but the roots and our own, we should be anchored with that. One is, uh, so the syllabus, then uh, such occasions should be more, where um, these kind of debates and discussions take place. Then the trips and tours. Uh, now, I, I'm there for nine years in uh, the wall city of Lahore, and in Lahore for God knows how many years. But I don't see particularly the fashionable schools visiting our historic areas and institutions um, very often. What to talk about, I'll have to really scratch my head to understand when was the last time, um, except for the last night function of the BNUS. <laughs> so other than that, when, when was uh, a trip made? Kabhi security ka issue hai ji, mare bache wo nahi kar sakte. Okay, if you want to raise them as chocolate uh, children, that's your choice. Uh, but let them rough out in the streets of uh, the Lahore. And let them, uh, there, there was a times when we grew up, camping hoti thi, civil defense hota tha, um, uh, trips hote the, field trips, and uh, to, to the historic places. So how far have our institutions connected them with that in terms of their syllabus, in terms of their trips? I think that that is very important, and uh, that will give them uh, a sense of pride, and their anchoring with their own roots. Then the rest, if they can branch off to any part of the world, but they should know what they and how do they belong to their poetry, their music, their language, etc., etc. Et Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Lashari Sahib has already elaborated a lot regarding the importance of schools and the uh, education uh, which uh, must be there to inculcate in the minds of our young generations. Unfortunately, uh, our education is only focused on one aspect, that is the education from these textbooks. Textbooks education is only 50% of education. The remaining 50% is the tarbiyat. Talimo tarbiyat a kathal word, hai na? So we have focused on the study of engineer and doctor or take a good grade. But when you have a good job, you have a personality development, grooming, and this is the same way. When you go to the museum, go to the heritage places, go to the culture, how many people are in Gujarat? Who is in Gujarat? Madam, do you have any important folklore in Gujarat? Have you heard any important folklore? The most important one. Sonny Maiva. So you uh, clapping for her because she did a good uh, answer. Actually, when I you, uh, have a uh, sir also went there, the Ram Pyari Museum. Have you seen it? Yes, that's the reason. So the, we are in a city where we belong to or where we uh, were born, we don't know what are the important places. So Ram Pyari Museum, just a, a history, it was a museum built, a mahal built in 1918 by a Ram Chandar Das, a Hindu contractor in the name of his third, uh, sorry, second wife, Ram Pyari. When she went to uh, India after independence, the uh, mahal was given to a school, girls school, till 1980, is a, given to a primary school, then is a, uh, used as a hostel of a high school of the girls. And in year 2004, Gujarat University was uh, established. Then it was a, 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 a hostel of the Gujarat University girls students. But what unfortunately, that uh, there is a Sony Bazaar is also there. Uh, beside this uh, Ram Pyari Museum, this is a Churiya, where they are and this is a very beautiful So uh, the most important thing, wherever you have a museum or a heritage place, you must uh, show to our younger generation what are our heroes. Heroes of your local culture, your local city, Arif Lohar, 
then his father alam lohar sharif kanjai the famous punjabi poet then the shohdas then also the youngest civil judge of whole world is written in a guinness book of world record also belongs to gujarat nobody knows from the gujarat city so this i think that this culture should be given to our younger generation through these books or the museums or the site visits so this is most important taleem aur tarbiyat jab tak saath nahi chalegi is culture evolve karne ka ya apni young generation mein hum isko aage leke nahi ja sakte thank you so much sir and i will come back to this uh, uh, talk that we're having about young logon ko hum kis tarah aur involve kar sakte hain but before that we're in the half a mark and i want to talk about humne culture ki tareef to bahut ki hai ab thoda critically bhi dekhte hain kyunki culture kabhi kabhi na vulture bhi hota hai not all aspects of our culture are good some of them are known ke hamari kuch segment society ko wo control bhi karta hai kis kis ne yahan par suna ji ye aap nahi kar sakti hamare culture ka ye hissa nahi hai so culture ki bahut dafa ek soti bhi hoti hai jo istemal ki jati hai so how can we identify between the good and the bad and help other people do the same mam bina mera sawal sabse pehle ye aap se hai lekin cuz i know ye mazey ka sawal hai and i think we need to have a like a very uh, blunt conversation about how we can critically look at our culture and take out the things that are not working anymore that are oppressing a particular segment and then find ways of evolving it so you can start and but anyone else if wants to jump in they can yes dekho uh, first of all वी हैव टू बी फियरलेस हमें डरना नहीं है हमारी अगर कहते हैं एक मुहावरा है जितनी चादर है उतने पैर फैलाओ <laughs> है सो so, uh, मगर ये होता है कि वैन वी लुक एट दी सोसाइटी डूइंग अ फंक्शन और शादी पे इतने पैसे खर्चे हैं और इतने का लहंगा आया और इतने का ये खाना दिया है तो द रेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल से कि इस तरह तो करना है वी हैव टू डू समथिंग बेटर अगर इसके साथ नहीं किया तो लेटस तो आई फील दैट वी जस्ट हैव टू पुट अवर फुट डाउन एंड से कि आई कॉन्ट अफोर्ड इट मुझे इतना ही पूछता है मैं यही करूँगी एंड देन वी रेडी टू लिसन टू पीपल्स क्रिटिसिजम आर वी रेडी टू लिसन टू दाउ पीपल क्रिटिसाइज आस if we are always going to be listening and feeling fearful then we can't do anything in our life hai na we have to make ourselves happy first not the other pehle idhar khushi aani hai if i am happy here and i am contented here only then can i give happiness to someone else ऐसे ही है ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इधर सेटिस्फेक्शन होगी तो देन आई कैन सेटिस्फाई अदर्स हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल दैट आई एम ऑल द टाइम अफ्रेड एंड फीलिंग फ्राइट एंड 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 देन एक्सपेक्टिंग के मुझसे कोई अच्छी काम निकलेगा नो सो एंड अनदर थिंग कल्चर को हवा नहीं बनाना डोंट मेक इट इन टू अड मास्टर विद अ सोटी कल्चर इज ओनली देयर इट इज आज कल तो है ही नहीं कल्चर पूछ क्या रहे हो देर इज नो कल्चर इन आवर डेज है जिस उम्र में हम पैदा हुए थे हम चलते फिरते खुद बाहर भागते थे सड़कों पे गलियों पे किसी ने हाथ नहीं लगाया था आज कल कैन वी डू दिस नो वी आर अफ्रेड फॉर आवर चिल्ड्रेन हाउ कैन वी लेट दम आउट ऑन द स्ट्रीट we don't know what types of people there are the culture of looking after human life and revering human life that is the true culture na which was hamare bado mein tha buzurgo mein tha but now something's happened we have to make it we have to our children are our most precious commodity not commodity many kaun <laughs> the most precious to cheese here asset is mulk ka for this country is our children our children are blotting papers they will absorb from the environment they will absorb from their the first school is their house is their home the first school is their mother and father theek hai na 
So first of all, I would like the mothers and fathers to look within. Either sahi ho jaye, to bacha khud do khud automatic he will absorb the uh, influence. Sobat, sobat, or sobat. And then we should not be afraid. Kisse done hai? Aapne bachon ke liye ka rahe hai na? So bachon ke liye humne idhar sabse pehle andar bahe saaf ho na hai. Bacha khud do khud. Bacha za so innocent, so pure. I tell you. Aap unse koi baat karo, wo saaf, they tell you, they can't lie. They're pure. But they, when they grow up, they learn from the environment. And this is the culture which we have to get rid of. The bad, the vulture. Hmm. Right? Bilkul. Would anyone else like to comment yes, on the please? Yeah. I'm going to pick up something that uh, Kamran Bahir just said, because I think it has to be placed into context. You talked about the need to go and you know, talk about bullish high, etc. We've been caught and trapped in something which mercifully has not been implemented in its fullest form, and that is the 18th Amendment. We've forgotten that the 18th Amendment required a decentralization of education, and it was left to the provinces to determine their own syllabi. And I remember asking Mrs. Kusuri, since we are in Newlands, when it came out, I said, you are running a school, a system of schools, by which a parent, who, a child who's in Sialkot, uh, if his parents are mother or father, as the case may be, may be transferred to, let's say, uh, Tanduadam, then you will automatically give them uh, admission in Tanduadam. And different, so across the country. It's a wonderful, wonderful mechanism. But I said, how are you going to cope with this statutory requirement which stipulates that each province will have its own curriculum, and should the Sindh government decide that they want Sindhi as the basic language of education, and should KPK decide Pashto should be the language, then how will you accommodate this when it comes to the inter-provincial transfers? To be fair to her, she said, we hadn't thought this through. I said, I, don't worry about it, because I don't think the government thought it through. It's a disaster, because if we either we repeal that amendment, or we implement it. But to implement it is to go against the grain of what you've just mentioned, which is nationhood, which is where we want to have one thought process, one form of education by which we, at one level, are standardizing what should be our competitiveness in the international market and domestic market, and at the same time, protecting and underscoring our own value system as provinces. Yes, we should be proud of being Punjabi and uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, Sindhi and uh, Pathan. Why not? But at one level. But it should not be the only identity that we have because we are also Pakistani. We are hyphenated. Okay? As we become hyphenated, how many of you are going to go abroad after you've left uh, uh, Newlands? Okay? Hands up. Be brave. How many of you are going to go to Canada or UK or USA for higher education? Only one? Ah, come on, you're chickening out. <laughs> Chickening out. You'll be a hyphenated Pakistani. Okay? You'll go to the States, you'll be a UK, a US Pakistani. You go to Canada, you'll be a Canadian Pakistani. So why can't we have hyphenated identities here where we're both provincial? And now, I just wanted to mention that because this is something that we don't talk about. The second thing we don't talk about is India. We have, and um, you just mentioned, Ji, on um, uh, being a pro proponent of Kathak dancing, etc. How many of the audience here would know the difference between Malkons and Bhairavi? None. Can any of you identify? The answer is no. Can you tell me, and I'm going to challenge you, how many of you sing apart from the bath? How many of you sing as such? One, two. Two out of all of you, and you are only one-tenth of your school strength, okay? How many of you dance in public apart from weddings? No, uh, apart from on weddings. How many of you play a musical instrument? Okay, now, that, forgive me, and I'm going to be bold here, Dima, is the failure of the school system. Because if 
at this age they're not being that is not that skill is not being imparted to them then when are they going to learn i know it's bad manners to talk about india i when i went to doon school for example which is a counterpart of hsn college i discovered they had 1600 pupils that's the same number almost that you have here in the school and they had an orchestra which consisted of 75 students so out of 1600 students there were 75 who could play together in an orchestra and you can know they were playing the mirdangam they were playing the tabla they were playing the sarangi they were playing the sarod all of them were talented all right and these were just 75 chosen out of them and the conductor was an 18 year old senior student not a teacher in atl so what i'm trying to say is that they inculcated that at that level they can have in china with all the languages and dialects that they have they can have a national curriculum why was it possible why was it possible in china within 75 years of its existence and impossible in pakistan so when the in answer to your question yes we should have something which is going to create the commonality between us and emphasize that commonality but if we don't do it now we won't have the chance we won't have the chance Welcome. so can i leave yeah. it at that yes yeah. yes you can okay, <laughs> thank you that was beautifully said okay. now we don't have much time left because we want to take 10 minutes for questions as well so i would like to throw a final question into the void as they say and just the management uh, your screen hai ye bilkul blank hai i know i will be seeing the questions here so just letting you guys know if there's some technical glitch that you guys can figure out so humne yahan par thodi si uh, you know we've talked a lot about you know young people about how uh, they they aren't being engaged in the ways that they should be so moving forward when we talk about our cultural identity ek to ek two part hai ek ek to main as the representative of the youth yahan par zara kuch kehna pasand karungi ki i do feel ke it's also the failure in a way of the of the people who are in charge of our culture and in charge of making sure that it gets to us where i feel ke somehow i do feel ke us table pe jahan pe decisions ho rahe hain is there enough youth representation as well because young people are very different nowadays like if you were to give us all of this information on tiktok because we might not be dancing on public in public but we do dance on tiktok you know so we have like this entire digital space now and that if it's properly utilized could do amazing things where there will be much less restrictions so my question is to you guys ki is there steps being taken or what what steps could be taken to kind of pump some young blood into the conversation first of all and secondly like who gets to carry this conversation forward ki kya hai hamara culture kis direction pe jana hai aur kisko is conversation ko carry forward karna bhi chahiye so that's just like my last question which is something i would just if everyone can just briefly kind of comment on that i know thoda mushkil hai lekin yes <laughs> हमने तो अपना जिगर का टोटा अपना बेटा इस इस कल्चर और फिल्म को दे दिया जिसने पिछले दस साल लगाकर आपको एक पंजाबी फिल्म अभी दी है सो so, आई मीन इट्स नॉट इजी फॉर अ पेरेंट टू डिसाइड एंड यू आर स्टडिंग इन लम्स and he didn't want to continue with lumps and we allowed him to do that he wanted to seek his own uh, you know future pursuit and that's where he's come to but uh, it took uh, how much time how much effort how much dedication uh, focus that's a separate story but what i mean to say is when we the elders will learn to let children be children of tomorrow i think that will be the best service to do as uh, if i can recall khalid uh, khalid jibran says your children are not your children but they are sons and daughters life's longing for itself they live with you but they have their own thoughts which you can't fathom not even in your dreams so be try to be like them instead of wanting them to be like you something like that so uh, i think it's it's very important that uh, we Uh, understand the dynamism of change of of the how societies evolve yes there is a problem with the, the generation gap is always there but uh, when parents will 
see through the prism of the children, I think that will hold a much better future. Thank you, sir. And I think not just parent systems as well, you know, because we need to have young people given the chance, even if they don't have a direct link to someone in this particular field. So I think systems we have to work on. And sir, you are in sports and culture. It's a question which has a number of answers. But practically, I think very difficult to implement it. The major, uh, I am just giving one example without giving a name of the school. In one school, I have read in a newspaper that it a notice written on the notice board. This school me Punjabi ni bolni, tu nikal dita jayega. After 16 years of my education, after my doing the engineering, I read the first time in Punjabi for the CSS exam all the Sufi poets. So what our education is? Sir, what you are saying is, what sir, madam you are saying, Kathak dance. I, when I was a secretary tourism, tried to have a Kathak dance at Shalamar Garden, the heritage of Pakistan, world heritage. Unfortunately, could not do it. So another example, there is a Ranjit Singh sculpture made and uh, uh, established perhaps at the Lahore Museum. What happened? Someone came at throw the uh, black ink on it and said, then it uh, g uh, was transferred to the Lahore fort. What happened there? One person came at seven o'clock with the hammer and threw it in the arm. So where we are? So the answer is very difficult to implement. That's my view. If both of you, I'm sorry, sorry. Ek -ek minute mein, yes, because 10 minutes we also need for the questions. Steve. We can do it. We can do it uh, not to b become uh, heartbroken. The thing is that our children, uh, they follow their parents. What happens in the house, they, they, they absorb it. So if the parents are very open-minded, open visionary, and they know like what Khalil Jabran has said, that the children are not yours. They have their own life to follow. If you just believe this, the child will follow their own path and they will do what they want to do. I have great hopes for the youngsters. Even though they are confused, living in a confused society, but they have minds and they have got hearts. And they are more open to listening to the hearts and minds than the ages before. Than right? Than we, us. Yes, than and us. us, and us. Oh. We were told to keep quiet. You are not to speak in front of an elder person. Don't say this. Don't ask this question. In the schools, they were saying, don't ask questions. I tell my children in my school, ask questions, ask questions. This is if the day you start asking questions, I will be the most happy principal of that school. Huh? Dima, I'm going to take an opportunity of um, going back to the question that you had asked earlier, but very briefly. You talked about vultures as opposed to culture. I think probably the most damaging thing that has happened to Pakistan in terms of the future generation, and also the current one, but particularly the future, are the television channels. Television channels. How many, uh, I'm going to ask a very simple question, how many think, how many television channels do we have? And we'd like to hazard a guess? No, no, apart from a lot. Give me a number. 700? 100? Okay. 100? Any, any improvement on 100? It's a Linami. Bataye. XO, XO. Okay, it's 124. Now you've got 124 different opinions being conveyed every evening, multiplied by the number of anchors, multiplied by the number of speakers who can't stop speaking. You've got them influencing a whole community, okay, throughout the country, throughout the country. So I would regard that as probably the most damaging damaging element that we have, and the media, social media. Okay, we've not touched that, but I regard these as two being the two. So, with that, may I? Dajjal. Dajjal. Me, definitely, yes. social media can be a source of evil, but it could also be a source of good. It's just how we try to, like, manage it, I guess. Um, thank you so much. We
we do have some questions. We can't forget this completely because I think at the end of the day, it is also young people's collaboration in this conversation. So I'm going to take two questions. So I'm going to read the one and then maybe whatever resonates with you guys, you can give it to us. The first question is, why do we need to preserve the historic culture when we are creating a present culture? And if you can scroll, so that I can also ask the other question. And why we need to showcase for kids to decide themselves rather than to use yeah, rather than to say the culture is good or bad. So, ये दो सवाल अगर हम इसको पहले anyone would like to kind of go. I think we need to know हमारे roots क्या हैं. ये तो है ना. Historic. Why we we go back to history? Why do we read history? या हमारे पुरानी चीजें क्यों आती हैं? Why? Because it is it shows us from where we belong. You know. And uh, something to that effect, not that we're going to copy it, or we're going to follow whatever our granddaddies did, but if it is a good thing, then it needs, we, it is a historical background. I think ye hai best is that you pick and choose. Yeah. If you like something which your great grandfathers did, there's something coming in the family. Well, the child can see for himself, is it good, for example, uh, the family is very truthful. They cannot speak a lie for even if somebody put a dagger to the neck, right? They will have to decide, do we become diplomatic and hypocritical or do we remain truthful? So the, let, let it, the child decide eventually. Huh? Can I just make one observation? That is, when we're talking about culture and heritage, please do not restrict it to museums. Exactly. At yeah. the moment, it is frozen in the museums. In order to understand who we were, we have to go to the Lahore Fort, we have to go to mm -hmm. Gujarat Museum, we have to go to you know, the Harappa Museum or whatever, and try and create that linkage in our yeah. own minds. Yeah. We don't bring that into yeah. the classrooms. Different. And that, I feel, is a weakness, weakness yeah. of our yeah. system. Because yeah. it's not something that we need to go and look at and admire. And, but it needs to be something that is an integral part of yeah, our daily lives. Livable, we live in it. Of our daily mm. lives. Yeah, because would you like to comment? I think uh, I haven't uh, understood the question very well. Oh, <laughs> we can tell you this. <laughs> If Sorry. you can scroll back, uh, the kids one I can ask again. What we need to showcase for kids to decide themselves rather than to say the culture is good or bad. Yani, ha, wo Achha, okay. mein critical thinking ka yes, I, ultimately the children do make their decision. Hmm. But of course they need uh, some guidance, some parenthood, and, uh, and then some basic information. Um, and as they grow, they they evolve and they form their own independent thinking. But uh, we cannot say that right from the beginning we shouldn't give any that inherited, we also inherited something and we have to pass on uh, that to the, that knowledge, that beliefs, those values to our children. So uh, th th that's a kind of a heritage which different societies carry. And uh, th that's why we need to identify ourselves with what values does our society has, or my family has? I, as, as a person, I want to know who my parents are, where did they come from? A lot of people have been asking me, La Shari, I'm from Lahore, how, how do they connect? So I made a full research on this, that, uh, I mean, 14 generations ago, uh, it was my first ancestor, Langar Khan Baloch, came to Lahore during Hamayun's time. This is an urge with me. And uh, the Prani Nalkari is actually called Mahalla Langar Khan Baloch. Mm. So uh, now th th this is a curiosity which we all should carry. And then what kind of people, what kind of my parents values, I, I found them very hospitable, which I think is a thing which has always been with most of our people. Uh, my house in Muzang was like a dera uh, within a, the city. And they, they've been very open-hearted. I'm Punjabi, which we gallan karne ha. See, the one thing, sorry, I'm deviating a little, but I need to say that the problem basic is more with Punjab than other provinces. Mm. Mm. You see, yeah. the cultural delinking or shyness or, or lack of commitment is more pronounced. I've served my first nine years in Sindh. Every child gets up. I went to schools. 
as, as, uh, as an officer. So he starts his speech with Abdul Latif Shah Bhattai. Mm. Manu sabna sona, pakhi sabna hanj, kain kain manu manj, ache bu bahar ji. Mujhe bhi yaad ho gaya. Achha, idhar mujhe koi bulle shah yaad nahi, kyunke bolta hi koi nahi. Oh, to shukar hai, ek do usne kaafiyan aur woh gai hain, to hume wa. So, so point is, we are shy of our language. The best asset of any culture and the strongest thing is the language. So, just then, we have our language. Se ghabra sharma gaye. Yeah. Yeah, I would even go as far as we have become ashamed of it. Punjabi, like so, I'm ye, a ye ye masala to... Punjab, ke, aur Punjabi, and I've seen Punjabi and I've seen this. And this is the first time I've seen this. This is the first time I've seen this. This is the first time I've problem is with you. You don't know what you're saying. 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 Language anyway. is power, language is identity. Ji, sir, one question is the last one. I have told you this too. Do you think inclusivity in culture is the best thing to live with? Um, so, ji, your final thought. Uh, yes, I think that uh, inclusivity is, uh, in culture is the uh, best thing. Uh, uh, one example I just want to give it regarding the uh, student, uh, the children, how to guide it. Guidance is very important from the parents, the home. जब हम घर जाते हैं ना अस्सलाम वालेकुम एक हमारा था जब हम बच्चे छोटे थे तो आते एंट्रेंस होते नॉक करना ये छोटी-छोटी चीजें हैं लेकिन दिस इज अ कल्चर अब क्या है कभी गौर किया आप लोगों ने जाते हैं सबसे पहले मोबाइल पे सारे डाइनिंग रूम में बैठे हैं ना या अपने कॉमन रूम में पांचों के पास मोबाइल है उस पे लगे हुए एक दूसरे बात भी नहीं करते दिस इज गाइडेंस जो है कल्चर इवॉल्व जरूर होता है नई चीजें जरूर यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस इट और लर्न इट बट Practically, the basic thing must be there. So, guidance of the parents are must, and I think uh, it, it should be uh, the priority. The language Sarah has already mentioned it, and I have given the example of the school where it was written categorically Punjabi is prohibited in this school, unfortunately. Yes, hopefully, we will come to a time when we will not see such things. Everyone, that was our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you all of you for the riveting conversation that we had. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun and I'm honored that I got to ask you guys these questions and have these conversations with you. On behalf of Beacon House, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being a part of the Students of Tomorrow, Edition 15, Guardians of the Future. Also, please, I have been told to please go visit the immersive art exhibit, Coexist, Co-exit and um, and we also thank, would like to thank our lead sponsor UBL for their continued support. Thank you, everyone. Abhaa bhaa shukriya apka, and I hope you guys had a ha had a good time. Take care. <laughs>